I am always browsing sites of the day for fresh design ideas. But lately, I noticed that even awards honorable mention websites have some seriously cool interactive elements. Take this site for example. The moment I landed on it, this carousel caught my attention right away. The clip mask animations on the background images, animated titles, the active slide indicator on the side, a circular path animation on the button, and even a magnetic mouse effect on the link that follows the cursor. Everything is so seamlessly put together. Naturally, I wanted to break down this experience and rebuild it. After a few hours of tinkering, I managed to pull off a pretty solid replica of this carousel with JavaScript and GSAP. In this tutorial, I'll walk you through every step to recreate this impressive carousel for your website, making sure it's fully responsive so it looks just as good on mobile. If you enjoyed this video, a like would mean a lot. And if you are new here, consider subscribing for more tutorials like this. And for those looking to access the source code, you can check out the link in the description below. Alright, let's dive into the code. Let's start with the HTML setup. First, I'll create a container for the slider itself. Inside this container, we'll set up a wrapper for the images. I'll call this slider. Within this slider, we'll add each of our slide images. I'll create a div with the class name slide, give each one a unique ID, and place an image element inside. I'll duplicate this item 4 more times, updating the IDs and image sources so we end up with 5 slides in total. Next, let's add the content section for the slider. I'll create a div with the class name slide title and divide it into two parts. Prefix and Postfix. In the prefix, I'll add the first part of the title which will stay fixed. For the postfix, I will add 5 placeholder texts that will rotate positions moving with each slide change. Now for the slide indicators which show the active slide. I'll add 5 divs with the class index and add an active class to the first one to highlight the initial slide. Next, let's set up the link. I'll add a wrapper called link wrapper for all the link content and within that an anchor element. Then I'll paste an SVG element set to 300 by 300 pixels including a path. The path stroke color and width are set according to the theme. Finally, I will add the label text for the link. We'll split it into two lines so we can animate the lines with a stagger effect. Each line will go in a paragraph element wrapped inside a div called line. And that's it. Let's move on to styling. To start, I'll set all elements to have zero margin and padding and use border box box sizing. For the HTML and body, I'll make them full height and set the overflow to hidden. I'll also apply a custom font. Next, the image elements are set to fill their containers with object fit set to cover to ensure they maintain aspect ratio and will change is set to transform for smoother animations. Now let's style the main container. The slider container is set to take up the full viewport width and height with hidden overflow and the slider inside it also spans the full viewport to hold each slide. Each slide is positioned absolutely, taking a full width and height and uses a clip part to create a mask effect. The first slide has an active clip path while the others start with a bottom aligned mask hiding them all which will change with animations. For the overlay content in slider content, I'll make it cover the viewport and set a high Z index to keep it on top. The slide title is positioned towards the center based on the total height it's going to get after applying the font size. It uses uppercase text with a bold font size. I'll add a clip path for an animated reveal effect and set will change to transform to prepare it for animation.
The slider indicator sits fixed on the right side of the viewport. It's a vertical flex container holding five small lines, each representing a slide. By default, each index has a slide scale effect and I'll add an active class to enlarge the current slide indicator. Next, let's style the link area. I'll place the link at the bottom right with the link wrapper centered inside it. Finally, the label text. Each line has paragraph text positioned to animate smoothly on slide change. For responsiveness, I'll adjust the slide title size and position on smaller screens, narrow the slider indicator and center the link horizontally. That's all for this styling. Now we are ready to move on to the JavaScript. For the JavaScript, I'll keep it short to focus on the main logic here. Feel free to reach out in the Discord or via comments if you have doubts or need more explanation on any specific parts. To begin, we wait until the page loads, then set up references to key elements like the slider, indicators, path animation, and the link wrapper. I'll define some core variables, the total number of slides, links for each slide and variables for tracking the current slide and animation status. To start, I'll define the total number of slides in the carousel and create an array of URLs that each slide will link to. These URLs will change as we navigate through the slides, so having them stored in an array makes it easy to manage and update. Next, I set the initial current slide index to 1, then I create a boolean flag is animating to track whether an animation is currently running. Lastly, I set up an event listener on the window object to listen for scroll events. When the user scrolls up or down, this triggers a function based on the scroll direction. If they scroll down, we call a function to show the next slide. If they scroll up, it goes to the previous slide. Next, let's set up each slide's initial state. First, I'll grab all the slides and loop through them to apply different styles based on their position in the carousel. For the first slide, I'll set it to display at normal scale and position with a higher Z index so it's fully visible when the page loads. For the other slides, I'll add a mask to keep them hidden initially, placing them behind the first slide and scaling them up slightly. This sets up a zoom out effect where these slides will animate into view during the transitions. Now let's set up the function to move between slides. 
starting with show next slide. This function identifies the current slide based on the current slide index. I'll increase the index by one to move forward. Then I'll check if the next slide already exists. If it doesn't, I'll create it dynamically and add it to the slider container. Once that's done, I'll call a function to handle the animation, setting it to transition downwards. Next, show previous slide function. I'll identify the current slide, then decrease the index to move backward. If the previous slide doesn't exist, I'll create it on the fly and place it just before the current slide in the container. Finally, I'll use the same animation function, but this time set the transition to move upward. This completes the setup for moving slides back and forth in the carousel. Now let's go over how new slides are created and animated. Starting with create slide, this function dynamically creates a new slide when needed. I'll set up a new div with the class and ID for the slide number. Then I'll create an image, set its source based on the slide number and add it to the slide. I'll also add a clip part to hide it initially, place it behind other slides and scale it up for the zoom effect when transitioning in. Next, in animate slide transition function, I start by checking if an animation is already active. If not, I set the flag to true to prevent overlap. I select the images in the current and next slides, then set the initial clip path for the next slide based on the direction. If moving up, the clip path opens from the top, otherwise it opens from the bottom. I also set the next image to be scaled up and position the z-index of the slide so the next slide is on top. Then I update the slide title, indicators and link based on the current direction. Next, I create a timeline to handle the animation with a cleanup function at the end to reset Z indexes and set the flag back to false. The timeline includes animations for the circular and text effects. I animate the scale and position of the current and next images as well as the clip path to reveal next slide smoothly. From update slide title function, I first normalize the slide index to get the correct display number. Then I set a multiplier based on the screen width to adjust the animation speed. I update the current top value variable to position the title's y coordinate and animate it to smoothly transition. In cleanup slides function, I loop through all slides and check each slide number. If a slide's number differs from the current index by more than 2, it's removed to keep only relevant slides active. Normalize slide title function adjusts a slide number within the total range. It ensures the index loops correctly so we get the right slide regardless of the direction.
Finally, cat image source function returns the image path for each slide by combining the base path with the normalized slide number. This skips each slide's image in sync with its position in the carousel. Next, in update indicators function, I start by normalizing the index to get the correct position of the active indicator. Next, I loop through all the indicators, scaling each one down slightly to show they are inactive. Then, I target the active indicator based on the normalized index and scale it up, making it visually stand out. The entire scaling effect is set to animate smoothly over 2 seconds, creating a clear transition as each slide changes. Next, in the create new text function, I am setting up the text animation by creating two new paragraph elements. I set their text content to view and project and adjust their starting position for a vertical animation effect. Then, in animate text function, I create a timeline for a staggered text animation. First, I target the current lines of the text, then use create new text function to add new lines. The timeline moves the current text up, creating a smooth transition and removes it once the animation completes. Next, I add the new lines into place and animate them to slide up from their starting position, creating a clean staggered effect with a small delay. This gives the text a subtle professional transition every time the slide changes. Finally, in update link function, I first normalize the slide index and adjust it to match the link array. Then I select the link element and update its href with the URL associated with the current slide. Next, I set the circular animation path. Using GSAP, I configure its stroke dash array and stroke dash offset based on its total length and rotate it for positioning. The animate circle function uses a timeline to create a looping animation along this path. It moves the stroke offset in one direction, then resets and animate back, giving a continuous rotation effect around the circle when slight changes. For the magnetic button effect, I use GSAP's Quick2 method to smooth out the link wrapper's X and Y positions. On mouse movement, the X and Y values are just based on the cursor's position relative to the link's center, creating a subtle pull effect. When the mouse leaves, the position resets to the center. Finally, I center align the link wrapper on the page, completing the setup for both the link update and the circle animation effects. And that's it. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.